Hey guys, welcome to another video. How are you guys doing? If you're new, hey, do not forget to smash that subscribe button and join the family. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. I really, really appreciate you. So I'm super excited because today I'm doing my monthly wrap up yeah! and my TBR for the next month. In the month of January, February, I read really nice books. If you've not seen that video, please go check it out. So today I'm going to be talking about the books I read in March. Now, this month was crazy, okay? It's really, really crazy because the books I read, well, let's just get into it. So these are the books I read in March. I read one, two, three, four, five. I read five books, but I didn't finish one of them and i'm going to explain why so let's firstly start with the motivational book i decided that every single month i'm going to read at least one motivational or personal development book because i want to also improve myself i want to you know be a better version of myself you know you know you know <laughs> okay so i read this one the subtle heart of not giving a <laughs> in my vlogs i already must have told you guys about it but this is a book that you really need to read i love the fact that man mark manson was really really blunt and he didn't really give a flip when he was talking in the book and the book talks about different aspects of our lives like relationship family friends uh self-control ourselves in particular and i really really liked it so i think this is a book everybody should read of course i gave it five stars yeah there are some parts in this book i just marked there's this part that says in a nutshell is what self-improvement is really about prioritizing better values choosing better things to give a fuck about because when you give better fucks you get better problems and when you get better problems you get a better life apparently in the book there was also a part where it says something like you actually choose the problem you want so if you want to lose weight it's another problem but if you decide to stay overweight then that's a problem because the problem de it depends on the problem you want for example when you are overweight your problem is you you feel uncomfortable you start to feel like uh you cannot move fast unhealthy you know all those choices and if you decide to start to lose weight you go to the gym that's another problem because when you start to go to the gym you have to wake up early you have to try to eat healthy that's another problem it's not like it's easy you know so you can choose your problem and i think i really like that point there are some other points in it that i really really like also but yeah that's one of them so i think you should actually give this book a go oh my god you guys i really loved this one you've reached sam by dustin tao honestly you guys this book was really really uh it's a sad romance book actually it talks about 17 year old julie clark and her boyfriend sam she actually planned her life that she was going to you know leave ellensburg i think it's ellensburg okay i forgot the name of the town but she planned that she's going to leave the town with her boyfriend and start a new life in a new place but her boyfriend died and funny thing is people blamed her for the boyfriend's death but that's not the cocoa of the book the cocoa of the book is that she wanted to move on after just one week of his death and then obviously she could not because she loved the boy sorry i said the boy like is it? yeah it's a stranger but she loved her boyfriend and so when she realized she could not take it anymore she decided to give him a phone call and when she called sam picked up the freaking phone he picked up the freaking phone you guys <laughs> So that part was like someone who's dead picked up the call then she started having conversations with him and she could not let go so the book tells you how you know it hurt her it hurt him and how she kind of like you know dealt with the whole situation i think this book you should read it it's a sad book it made me almost cry because i was actually listening to a sad song <laughs> so it's crazy but you guys check out the vlog where i talked about this more I gave you five stars of course i tried you guys i tried to read this book is the sex lives of african women by nana dakao shekiyama okay so honestly i cannot pronounce her name i'm so sorry if i butchered it of course but you guys i didn't like this book i i, I will not say i didn't like the book because i read it to this point i read it to this point because i wanted to be sure if i liked it or not i stopped at page 88 and the sex lives of the african women described in this book are not normal sex lives like they are all 
homo normative kind of sex lives polyamorous kind of sex lives in my own opinion or at least to the point where i stopped that's what i think and i started to wonder if my sex life is normal you know i understand people go through different things people find comfort or pleasure in different things but at the same time i don't think she should just generalize and say uh, the sex life of african women i think it would be better as the bizarre sex lives of african women maybe that will make more sense then i'll know okay i'm not reading normal sex lives but i kind of didn't feel represented in any way somehow somehow the only one that i kind of felt like okay was a little bit not normal but a little bit was this lady named elizabeth she's a 44 years old a heterosexual woman of nigerian and scottish heritage and she has a disability yeah so she's only one that but you know let me i even discussed this with my friend i was like okay babe do you think nigerian or african men ever want to share their babes or their wives with another person for example i have a husband and then i i can sleep with another woman and my husband is okay with it i don't think that's normal but you guys tell me what you know so i've not read it i might actually finish it before the end of the year but lord knows i i think it's a kind of book that would mess with you if you don't if you're not strong in your own beliefs maybe it might mess with you yeah <laughs> i picked up this one while i was actually feeling like i was in a slump with this so i picked up this one with the fire on eye oh my god by elizabeth Esivedo. honestly you guys you should read this book this book talks about emony emony is a single mom she got pregnant at the age of 14 and now she's 17 years old and she's trying to juggle her life and she stays with her grandma she actually found love and she loves to cook when i started reading this book you guys this book legit was smelling like suya that was what i felt when, when i actually picked the book i was saying babe oh babe this book smells like suya i feel like eating suya and he went out to get me suya i was so happy about <laughs> another thing i like about this book is the fact that on some pages you see food fruits pictures and then there are some recipes here like i really like it but I've, i didn't try any of the recipes but i'm going to show you guys the recipes are quite cool and there are three parts of this book the first part is the the part one is the sour the second part is the savory and the third part is the bittersweet i think it's the bittersweet because i read yeah so yeah the bittersweet so there are in each part there are like recipes i love the fact that in this book it talked about how you can actually still be who you are and still choose yourself even though you have every other thing on your neck i really liked it it showed the power we have as women we can actually you know multitask do this do that and at the same time still choose what you want i really liked it she followed her ambition to be a chef at the same time she take care of her ch a child and also she found love you guys need, read, need to need to read it i gave it five stars obviously of your slay the last book i read this one okay this one is a very funny one because mm, you guys i went to the supermarket to buy food stuff and i branched med plus and then i saw this book i bought three books actually but i didn't know i was even going to read it i read this in a freaking day it's a very quick read it's not see it's not uh, a thick book so you can actually finish it in a day and it's really nice i was on my seat the whole time although i put it down sometimes because i'm this kind of person that suspense <laughs> my boyfriend says suspense will kill me but at the same time to be honest i'm very suspensive i really want to know what happened i cannot calm down until i find out so that's the kind of person i am so i wanted to know i wanted to know so it talks about three girls Ebere, uh janet Oz uzo and pamela the three of them are best friends but janet died and when Jeanette died, Iberi was kind of crazy about it. I was always talking about it. Then later, Iberi started to find out that this death is not normal. Like, people are dying at the same time every year. Around Christmas periods, people are dying. So what's happening, you know? What is happening? So the, the plot twist in this book, <laughs> it, was, it was unexpected. I didn't expect it. I was just so shocked. You know, I was like, what? How come? And you call this love? apparently like it would blow your mind away well pamela didn't believe Ebere, and Ebere is like a jova with this kind of girl so you can imagine the kind of scenario she's in where she cannot actually you know dress she dresses like su <laughs> she dresses su -ish and it's kind of crazy shot but at the end of it they found out who has been doing the killings and it was linked to who and 
you guys just go and read it. i don't want to divulge too much but it's really really good what happened to janet huzo by miracle emeka wonko 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 i'm so sorry if i pronounced it wrong but i really really liked it and this actually has opened my eyes to more nigerian books that i would like to read because at first i i was not really a you know nigerian kind of person and i i don't really want to read history to be honest i don't like history like that so yeah those are all the books i read in march <laughs> i read five books you guys well i did have to one but i finished the rest and when i finished reading this one i was like okay i want to read another one asap but i had to control myself i had videos to edit so i just had to like keep everything aside okay i'm going to just record this video edit my videos so that i have time and start reading for the next month next month you know in a few days so for my january february march april for my april tbr i wrote out the names of the books i have here i'm going to pick them randomly i just want to read four books but i'm very very certain i'm going to read this atomic habits by james clare this is one of the books that everybody has been raving about and it will help you in your personal development and like i said every month i'll try to read one at least one personal development book so this is the one for it so i'm going to pick four books aside from that from my jar let's assume it's a jar so let's see I did this because I realized I have so many books that I'm not even reaching for and I don't know why like it's not like it, the story might not be interesting I just like I don't know so this might help me so I'm gonna close my eye and pick one okay so let's see which one this is uh, oh my god this one is Marianne case oh my god that book is big <laughs> Marianne case the next one Mm. I pick. I think I picked two. Looks like two. That's one my hand is still picking. Okay, it's two. Let me pick this one. Let me drop that one. <laughs> oh my god! Which one is this? Which one is this? Odufa. Let's see. Oh my god! It's crazy that the books I'm picking are down. Ah. Oh. Okay. The next one. This one. Hey God, oh, I hope it's not a book that has double. Oh my God, wake me when I'm gone. So I actually decided that if I pick a book with this number two, for example, this one is a three book, like by the same author. So I want to try to read it. So I'm going to actually read the all three from the author. And since this is number two, so I'm going to pick the remaining. Yeah, so the one I picked was Wake Me When I'm Gone which is the second book by this author but i since i have the other two books by the author so i'm going to actually try to read the three of them so apparently i think my four books are complete actually is not longer four it's now five so these are the books i'm going to read for the month of april let's see how it goes so i'm going to read the back to you guys and you know like a synopsis or something like that. is this synopsis or preview rachel's holiday so this is how it looks like Honestly, I have had this book for a very very long time and I don't even know who gave it to me I didn't buy it myself. I probably didn't buy it So it's probably a book I took, borrowed from someone when I was in school and I ended up not returning it So yes, how did it end up like this 27 unemployed? Oh Mistaken for a drug addict in a treatment center in the back house of nowhere with an empty Valium bottle in my knickers Meet Rachel Walsh. She has a pair of size 8 feet and such a fondness for recreational drugs that her family has forked out the cash for a spell in Cloister, Dublin's answer to the Betty Ford Clinic. She's only agreed to her incarceration because she's heard that rehab is wall to wall jacuzzis, gymnasiums, and rock star going tepid turkey and it's about time she had a holiday but what rachel doesn't count on are the two the toe curling embarrassments heaped on her but the top the, the, the toe curling toe oh my god but what rachel doesn't count on are the toe curling embarrassments heaped on her by family and group therapy the dearth of sex drugs and rock and roll and missing look her ex what kind of a new start in life is this ah 
okay i don't know <laughs> let's hope for the best with this i don't know this is also written by a nigerian author when anthony mokoro discovers he cannot afford he cannot father a child his world his whole world comes crashing his hope is rekindled when he meets and falls head over heels in love with odufa a beautiful girl with a shrouded past but Anthony finds soon enough that nothing is as it seems as they both get entangled in a love affair so intense and toxic. It quickly begins to spiral out of control. Wow. So that's all. Just shot. Okay. This is like a love story, like forbidding love kind of story. Maybe. I don't know. Wake me when I'm gone. Everyone says that Essa is the most beautiful woman in the region, but a fool. Hello. A young widow, she lives in a village where the crops grow tall and the people are ruled over by a chief on a white horse. She married for love, but now her husband is dead, leaving her with nothing but a market stall and a young son to feed. When the chief knocks on Esse's door demanding that she marry again as the law of the land dictates, she must. Esse is a fool once more. There is a high price for breaking the law and, and even greater cost for breaking the heart of a chief. Hey, Esa will face the wrath of gods and men in the fight to preserve her heart, to keep her son and to right centuries of wrongs. She will change the lives of many on the road to freedom and she will face the greatest pain a mother ever can. Wake Me When I'm Gone is a story of curses broken and lives curses broken and lives remade of great tragedy and incredible rebirth. In this is second novel Nigerian writer Odafe Atogun unfolds a world rich with tradition and folklore, a world filled with incredible people of remarkable strength, a world that is changing fast. The cover is beautiful actually. So then the other two books written by him is this one, Taduno's Song. The day a stained brown envelope arrives at Taduno's homeland, he knows that the time has come to return from exile. Arriving full of hope, the musician discovers that the community no longer recognizes him and no one recalls his voice. His girlfriend, Leila, has disappeared, abducted by government agents. Taduno wanders through his house in search of clues but any trace of his old life has been erased as he becomes aware that all that is left of himself is an emptiness. Taduno finds a new purpose to unravel the mystery of his lost life and to find his lost love but soon he must face a difficult decision to fight the power or save his woman, to sing for love or for his people. Huh. When music is silent you hear the laughter of the tyrant. That is really okay. This last one, the cabal. <sighs> I'm tired of reading you guys. My mouth. Bako Thomas lives a solitary life, a calm center in an increasingly unstable world. The city outside his apartment is sliding towards a dystopia of as a fuel crisis old citizens to ransom. He is down to his final chance with Ave. Ave is a girl. His girlfriend of two years and his relationship with his neighbors. The law. Gebu and Mimi is fraught with anxiety and tension. When a tragedy forces him to go on the run, he soon finds himself being roped into the murky world of politics and corruption he thought he had left behind for good. Okay, so the Cabal actually sounds like something like a secret call kind of vibe. Those are the books I'll be reading, you guys. Ah, I'm so excited. These are the books I'm going to read in April and these are the books i read in march so i'm going to do like a thumbnail kind of vibe oh don't fall don't fall don't fall i'll see you guys in my next video do not forget to subscribe oh, my camera is dying <laughs> juices yeah and we are done